nobody thinks that Taxi Driver is an indictment of taxi drivers. They don't think it speaks for all taxi drivers. You understand that Travis Bickle is an individual um, who's doing what he's doing, and you don't have to like him. <laughs> it's irrelevant. And uh, I just wish that people felt more that way about female characters instead of thinking female characters represent all women. <laughs> They're just individuals on their own little journey. I've always been a bit of a weirdo, really. So I, I, like, I couldn't wait to leave school because I was quite aware that my weirdness didn't have much currency <laughs> at school. It was like, I kind of knew, like, this is not it. I'm going to have more fun later on when I can find people that are like me. I got offered to, to pitch a script with the view of being in it. And, um, and so I pitched the script, they loved it. Um, but the director who'd requested me to do that, when he saw the pitch, he was like, it's great. I think you should direct it. And I was like, oh my God, you know, as if I don't have enough to do. But I, at the same time, I knew it was a great opportunity. I did want to direct. I just didn't want to direct pregnant, necessarily. <laughs> Childbirth is the stuff of horror, isn't it? It's like transformation, blood, screaming. There's an element of sci-fi to the whole thing. You know, a creature living within you. Parasites. I think there's a sort of uh, fear that comes from having been on your own for quite a long time and doing whatever it is you want to do. Your narcissism is about to be cut, cut short by someone else's narcissism because babies are just little egos, really. And I think that does sort of send a ripple of terror through a lot of people when they have kids. I, I sometimes talk about the character as being um, an anti-superheroine whose special powers are pregnancy, that this human being has a, the power within them to recreate themselves um, with a clone. So I think it's the perfect fodder for horror in, you know, I think a lot of horror springs from it, especially the horror within. My favourite horror films are things like Carrie, uh, The Shining, Don't Look Now, Rosemary's Baby, and they all deal with kind of liminal transgressions, like human transgressions. It's all sort of dealing with a person crossing over from normality into craziness. The film is, is questioning ideas of selfishness in society. We know that we're supposed to be nice to pregnant women and we know that we're supposed to be nice to babies, but why don't we extend that to the whole of society? Horror is the ultimate cinematic genre. You know, you're gonna see stuff that you don't normally see walking down the street. And I think that's what brings people into the cinema is um, those visual sort of um, assaults. <laughs> Put a hand on the table, yeah. uh, just more, I'd say, or both even, kick forwards through the blood so you're trying to push yourself, yeah. Because I've got a lot of experience as an actress and being on set generally, I kind of have a sixth sense of where the camera is and what the camera is seeing, you know. Um, it's kind of like a sleepwalking for me, is like where I need to stand and where my light is and all of that stuff seems to be instinctive now. I'm kind of like more interested in the vibe in the room. So even if I wasn't acting, I think I would be looking at the actors rather than looking at the monitor. The whole spectacle of film, surely, is that you feel like you're getting a glimpse of something that really happened. And that's why I like these very naturalistic, realistic performances. I want the audience to forget that they're watching a film, that they almost feel that they're sitting in the living room with, with the characters. And so when the violence occurs, they feel like they've actually witnessed it to the extent they even feel implicated in it. Everyone's life is important. What their hopes and dreams are, are significant to them. So I don't want you to look at Ruth and go, oh, she's a completely dreadful woman. I want you to go, what, what's led her to this? How can I empathise with this character to understand what makes her tick? I think that's what we need to do more as audiences. And that's what I wanted people to do with this character, is I wanted them to, they don't have to like her. I don't care whether you like her. Uh, you know, I just want you to understand her.